In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to go about creating your site development plan. Now that we've got our site location plan established and set up on our sheet, and we've preliminary set up our site development plan location, now we need to go and add some contextual information to the site development plan. So I've got an example and opened up. If we go to your assignment exercise and you open up the site plan one and two, I've opened up site plan one. All that we'll need to do is produce a site development plan showing the intent of your development. By now, a lot of you should have progressed your design for the site. So I have an example of a design that I have prepared for this project. So at least you can see this in a bit of context. It's not perfect at the moment. There's a lift shaft that needs to be addressed, etc., etc. But this was my proposed um, design for this project. So it was going to be a bit of retail on the ground floor. There's going to be a common stair that these apartments can access from the front of the street. And then down in the basement, we had two parking garages, and then the apartment works over uh, three floors, including the semi-basement. Okay, so in essence, this was my design solution for the site, and I factored in how the site fell, etc. Okay, so we need to show our intent for the site. So we need to establish a site development plan. So in AutoCAD, I've given you the example, I've given you this file that you can go and get off the AutoCAD exercise file location. You can go and retrieve this information, this exact site. So I'm going to show you how to take this information and make it look um, like that PDF example. So we need to establish a site plan that looks just like this. Okay, so this first tutorial, we're just going to cover how, it's about, how about going to set all this up correctly. Okay, so back in AutoCAD. The first thing that we need to do is I'll delete the roads because I've got a whole lot more information here that I can use, which is more correct. And I don't need all of this information. I probably need to keep the contours. The rest of this information, I can literally, the site information, I can delete. The road information, I can delete because here I've got a lot of the information already. I might leave this road access here. I will see about that for now, but in essence, I can remove everything else. So the first thing I'm doing is going to get rid of these center lines, start deleting the information you don't need, and I'll need to go and establish more of the tree locations, but we'll discuss a bit later. For now, I just want to get my site set up and establish these, these parameters like they set out over here. This should be 20 meters, not 90.9 meters, just a slight inaccuracy in the drawing, and I'll show you how to address that. Okay, all right. So I need to copy a lot of this information across to here and retain some of the contours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the lock tool and I'm going to lock the contours. Just means that if I select stuff, I can't delete them. Okay, the trees I'm going to delete as well because I'll go and relocate the trees and determine what trees are demolished, etc. Okay, but we'll go and change that a bit later. But for now, I'll show you how to use these tree symbols and how to um, show the ones that are demolished, which ones are going to be proposed, etc. Okay, all right. Now I'm going to go and isolate. So on my home ribbon and layers, I'm going to use the isolate command. I'm going to isolate just the, the blue layers for now. Okay, remember this was on our origin, so that's fine. I can delete all of this information. If the site's not on the origin, I would recommend creating a line from the origin switch on your on snaps if they're not on just so that i've got that origin preserved so if i move stuff back and forth it will work so i just want to get rid of all this information because i don't need a lot of that information i've got the road information but the road information is a bit inaccurate i need to copy this additional stuff across okay so let's just get rid of that get rid of that get rid of these road lines Now, if I delete these road lines, I am going to lose some of this information. So what you need to do maybe is break the line. So you need to go to modify and you're going to use the break command. So select these lines, break these at the end point. So select break these away because we're going to use this information a bit later. Break this. And break that line. Okay, just keep watching these tools, how I use the tools. Okay, and that's good. I can now delete the rest of this road information. So now I'm ready to bring back, because I'm going to need a lot of this information. So I'm going to simply just 
copy the road information. I'm going to copy all of this contextual information. So I'm just selecting all this information and I'm going to select the site boundary. So I don't want to copy the hatch across. You can. I'm just selecting that edge. I don't need, I don't need anything else. Okay, so I've got this information and I'm going to use this vertex over here and I'm going to copy this information across to here. So at least I've got the accurate road information. I've got the parking. I've got all this parking adjacent. Okay, now that I've done that, the next step is we need to start learning how to use our UCS correctly. Okay, if you go to the View tab, this is very important. You need to right click and on Show Panels, you need to add the Coordinates panel. So you need to go Show Panels and you need to add the Coordinates panel because we need to start using this UCS. And if we click on the UCS um, Settings dialog settings, it opens up these settings that you can go and set some of the the tools for your coordinates or you use this arrow down here which opens up the full UCS options okay so what I want to do is you want to switch on UCS settings you want to say update view to plan when UCS has changed this is important now and you want to allow selecting UCS icon and display an origin so just as it's set up here try and copy the same settings okay all right so now that I've got these settings here you can go and access this again and again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the site to orientate to the view correctly. So if I go to this three point command, all that's going to do is I'm going to align my axis with this road, for example, this endpoint, and I'm just going to hold this up in this direction. So what this does is it changes my view. So now that I can work in the correct direction of the way the site is set up. Okay, but now if I go back to my sheet, you notice this view hasn't changed. So what you need to do is you'll need to unlock this view if you haven't got the setup. And you'll need to apply the same settings in here. So make sure on coordinates that that's enabled as well. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the UCS. Now if I change the UCS in this view, in the viewport, so zoom out, let's get this endpoint over here. And then I click up anywhere. Then you'll notice that this would have changed the viewport. Now what I want to do is make sure that I get the scale correct. Scale 1 to 200. Okay, and then I'm going to pan this and put this in a good location. So this is the information that I'd like to see in my plan. Fantastic. So they will click anywhere at the view. Deactivate the viewport. Switch off pan. They will click and then lock the viewport. This is important. Okay. Now I'm going to fine tune this information just so that I can see. I just want to get the best contextual information. So here I'm just moving this a bit because there's a lot of information that I don't necessarily need for this. Fantastic. Okay, so that's enough contextual information for this project to show this so that I can have these two plans on the same sheet. Okay. All right, this whole process that I'm covering now will help you develop your site establishment plan and it will help you set up your actual site plan. Okay, then what I'm going to do just to complete this, this process, I'm going to copy this information. So move this up and I'm going to put it in line with this so you can literally snap and then move it across. I just want information to start reading correctly on this sheet and I'm going to grab all this information and I'm going to move it all down a fraction. Then I'm going to copy this information. So copy that from there to there. Now, the last thing that we're going to do in our sheet environment is just change the orientation of the north. So because this is true north, we need to move this north point to reflect where north is. Okay, so all that we do here, we can use this line here. So just create a line in paper space. So create a line from here to there and then move this down. Move this down to this north point. So in essence, all that we have to do is we need to rotate this north point to the correct. So everything's going to rotate this way. So in essence, I'm just going to, so here I just use my mirror tool. Because technically, north is going to rotate from there to there. Okay, so it's going to rotate to that direction. Okay, just remember because we're rotating the view 
So we've rotated the view in this direction, so all of this needs to rotate in the correct direction. Okay, so select your north point, go to the home tab, click on rotate, select this origin. Now you're going to hit R for reference or click on the reference icon. I'm going to select that option and I'm going to allow line it to the end of this, this file here. Okay, so that's great. I've established my north point, north point and I've established the correct setting up of my site. All I need to do now is go to my construction layer. If you don't have a construction layer, make one. I'm just going to change the color of my construction layer to match. I want these to match. Okay. Now I'm going to go and create a rectangle. And I'm going to draw a rectangle just to fit within my viewport. I will do an offset inside of my project to make this work. So I'm just creating a construction line in my viewport. So when I go back to paper space, you'll notice I've got this rectangle now. So I know what information I need to delete from this. Okay, so I'm going to go and say, I'm going to grab this line over here. I'm going to go to the offset command and I'm going to offset this by 2000 or 5000. That's totally up to you. I'm going to offset that by 5000. So offset 5000. Okay. So I can delete the internal line. All that I'm wanting to do now is actually delete all the unnecessary information around this line. Okay, so how do we do that? We're going to go to the trim command. We're going to click on cutting edge and I'm going to select this object as my cutting edge. Now all that I'm going to do is press spacebar. Now I can just start selecting the information outside of that. I can just literally start selecting all the information. So click and drag down. Now, what it's doing is it's deleting all the unnecessary information around the site. I just got to unlock this layer because that was locked. So just remember that, unlock, select this layer. Okay, now it's unlocked. Just remember if you go to layers, you can also click on all layers and then right click. And then you can say lock, unlock all. So it'll unlock all layers and, it'll make, and here you can control all the visibility at in one, one go. Okay, go back to trim again. So go back to trim, trim, T for cutting, select this object and literally cut, get rid of all the information you don't need. So literally go and find everything around here. Yes, the parking won't change because that's a group, but just select, get rid of the layers, the contours, information that we don't need. Okay, now once we've got rid of all that information, I can simply start deleting additional information. Let's get rid of all of that information around here. Okay, now that I've got rid of all this information, you're not, not having to work with unnecessary information. Good. Now we can move the street name to the correct location because we're going to use that later. Move that and we can move that other street name we can get again, but that's fine. We'll deal with that in the annotation. So let's get rid of that. Get rid of all of this. Okay. Now, because I've used arrays to create these, and if they're block objects, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explode all of these parking objects. Okay, so you're going to go to explode. Now, what it means I can do is now I can select these objects and get rid of them because I don't need them at the moment. So just do the same over here. If you're drafting and stuff, then you don't have to worry about the step, but just remember we can draw that in later. Okay, now that I've got rid of the unnecessary information, now I can start focusing on setting up a lot of my site information. I've got my contours in the correct locations. I'm happy with that. I've got some site information here that I'll need to fix and address. And I can delete the trees for the time being. Okay. Because we're going to focus on creating those in a minute as well. So let's just get rid of those. But this first video is just about setting up your site correctly, getting the basic information in so that we can start adding our design information. So our site, our roof, the way the roof works, the balconies, the planting, how that's going to work, how to establish the paving. Here I've got to fix some, here I've got to fix some information so that this works a bit better. Get rid of this parking over here. So let's get rid of that. Okay. And for your assignment, what, what we've decided to do, there won't be a building line that will run in this direction, so delete that. We're only going to have one building line that will be at the back here, so extend this line. So use, hold down this arrow and use the extend tool, select a boundary edge, select this as a boundary. Now extend this out. Okay, 
Here I've got an issue because there's a slight error here which I need to address. So I'm going to delete this dimensions for the time being. Get rid of that information. This is the example that I've given you to use. Okay. Delete that. Delete that. Okay. All right. This information will fix later. You can see it's slightly off axis. So here we can start fixing this information. If I open up my properties, it's on the other screen. If my properties here, I can start fixing this rotation. If I make it zero, you'll notice it'll start fixing a lot of this stuff. So maybe just fix all of this stuff quickly. Make this zero. I explain why the font is looking the way it does shortly. So let's get rid of this. Okay, now when using AutoCAD's adaptive fonts, what you need to understand is these fonts have different scales assigned to them. So if I go to the annotation tab and I go to add and delete scales, all that's happening is it's just telling me that all of these scales have been assigned to the font in this drawing. So what I'm going to do, these fonts all need to be one to one thousands, okay? And here you need to switch off this command as well. This will automatically add scales to fonts, okay? And this function will always show annotative objects. If you switch this off and you change scales, Objects with the correct scale, annotation objects with the with a different scale won't show. Okay, so that's just something to bear in mind, and that's I'll have a whole tutorial on how to use that correctly. Okay, but for now I'm just going to select everything. I'm going to go to add and delete scales, and I'm just going to delete all of these scales. I only want scale one to two hundred because in essence that's the scale that I want to use. So there's no additional scales, which will cause these things not to function well. Okay. So for our site, we've got our site boundary now, which is the blue line, and now we've got a building line, which means you can't pass build past that building line, but we're still going to have building lines across the front boundaries, but they're going to be zero building lines. So I'm going to show you how to go and set that up, okay, and add these labels in correctly, okay, and add some additional information. But for this exercise, just understand that all the, the boundaries of the site will be 30 meters, okay. If they do differ, We'll need to go and add that information as well okay and we'll need to use the hd diagram to add the correct values for the corners and we'll have a look at that in a minute in the next at all when we set that up okay but in this instance i think in this instance i'll quickly go and show you where that information is and then show you how to add those points okay now the first thing i want to do is we need to create so let's delete these let's create this let's get rid of the information for now I'm going to use my construction lines to generate this information correctly. Okay, so I need to fix the site up correctly. I've got my road in the correct place. I might have to do some amendments over here and I might have to fix some of this stuff over here. Okay, but in essence, it's pretty straightforward and easy. I need to match this road line, this red line with that red line. Spacebar again, use the match properties. Let's go to home, match properties tool. And I want to match that line with that line. And that line, spacebar, match properties, that line with that line. Okay. All right. So now that I've established the correct line work, I just need to use my break command, break, and I'm going to break this gray line. I'm going to keep the road line there because in essence, we want to maintain that. And here I can use a trim tool. Sometimes if these don't trim, it means that there's a slight error with the accuracy of the drawing. I can see there's some slight errors over here. And let's try that again. Sometimes oh, it was because of that line. So I'm going to trim that bit of line work and delete that. Okay, so that means that these arcs join well. So here's my road line, and this is how you come into my site. Make sure that this is a six meter. That's seven meters. I might change this to be six and a half meters coming in here. Okay, so that I'm going to change. All right, so let's do that first. I'm going to I've established this. What I've done is I've left a gap between that there and there of 500 mil roughly. This is not exactly correct because sometimes the site boundaries are not exactly accurate that you get from the council. But we're going to address that now with some construction lines. We're going to fix that and make a grid that will work for us and then add grid. So I'm going to make a grid that will work with my design. Okay, so I'm going to make a grid that will work with my design. Okay, so if you look at the top, you can see these are clearly broken up into lots. And that's what I'm going to focus on creating as well. Okay. All right. So I've got my entrance. I need to fix some of this information. I might need to stretch this information back and forth because in theory, this needs to be offset by six and a half meters. So with my construction layer active, 
I'm going to go to draw, I'm going to create a construction line, and I'm going to say O for offset. I'm going to change this to 6,500 because that's going to be how I enter my site. Okay. So what I can do is I can draw some new line work. I can draw some new line work, or I can simply grab the old line work and move this information. Shift right click to activate this perpendicular to the construction line. Okay, so that's all I could have done, and then I could just use grab the grip here and join this bit of line work. Okay, so that's all I could have done to address that. So at least I know that this is the correct width now. Okay, then I just need to add some line work over here, and usually this can go straight to the end because they might just pave this. This bit of line work will disappear once you come into the gate as well. So I'll need to establish my site boundaries, but for now, this is what I need to do, and I've got my site information. Just note, if you had used my example, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go and select this value. It'd be grayed out in a gray box. You need to change it to this value. Simply just delete the gray box and type in 900,03. Okay. All right. And then, yeah, we can fix this text. I've just noticed that some of this text sometimes it had columns built into it, which was incorrect. So this just needs to be no columns if it gives you issues. Okay, and you can use the match tool and likewise with this bit of text as well. And let's do the same because the text box is quite large. Let's reduce the text box and double click activate this and switch off columns. Okay, no columns. Okay, good. All right, but we'll, we'll address it a bit later on. Okay, we've got our site boundaries. Okay, we've got this information. Let's just rotate. Select all of this text. Make sure you've got the text selected. Press Control 1 to open up Properties, or you remember, you can click on this icon, does the same thing. Properties, I'm going to make sure that all my text is selected, and I'm going to change the rotation to zero, just that I know. Okay, and just remember, we are we working with this new origin. If I change my origin again to the world coordinate system, so if I went back to this over here, and if I go, there's a world, if I change this, you can change it, or you click on world, and you see it will return to normal and we've lost our view. Okay, so just remember that. I'm gonna use three points again, so I'm just gonna reset this view up correctly and it will automatically change. That's what's nice if you've got that setting active. It does cause havoc sometimes, so you might want to switch it off, but it just means that it rotates your view so that you're working in the correct orientation. And you can see where north is over here. It gives you an indication of where true north is with the view cube. Okay. Okay, now that that's working, what I am going to do is, if you're going to, you want to save this. So if you click on name UCS, what you can do is you can add these. And let's delete these, just click the delete button. This one's untitled at the moment, so I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this, rename, I'm going to call this site. Because this is my new site. It just means, if I press OK, and I change this to world, and I set, say set current, and I zoom out, it will have changed this to the world coordinate system. If I go back to the coordinate system again and I change it to site and I say set current, then everything will adjust and work in the correct orientation. So you can set up these UCSs all over the place to work for you. Okay. Now what I need to do is I had some reference images in here. I want to pull in some reference images so that I can get the correct tree location. So that's the next thing I need to go and establish. Because now in my sheet, I've got most of this information established. Now I need to start adding my site information. So setting up my site information correctly. Okay, so I'm going to grab my image and I'm going to set up my grids. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is set up my grids. So with my construction layer active, I'm going to go to my construction line tool. I'm going to create a vertical one, so a vertical. So that's my first construction line. Then I'm going to use the construction line again, so spacebar, and use offset, so it's seven and a half meters. So 7,000, that's my first earth, there's my next one. So you need to do this four times, okay? Yes, there will be a slight inaccuracy, and we'll explain that later. There is slight inaccuracy, so if we get to the edge here, you can see there's a very slight inaccuracy. These things are not accurate, okay? So just be careful with those, with those objects. I'm gonna go construction line again, draw, construction line horizontal and you're going to click there and now you're going to say offset 20,000 so offset 20,000 
and then offset 30,000. Okay, now we've got our grid structure. We need to set up a grid structure so we can set out where our stands are, for example. Okay, so that I've got that set up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a rectangle around my site. So create a rectangle. Okay, set up a rectangle around the site. Now I can simply select these layers. So if you want to isolate objects on a certain layer, what you can do is you select the layer first, the object that's on that layer, and you use the isolate tool. If nothing disappears, what you need to do is select this tool. Before you select anything, go to settings, and you're going to tell this tool that everything must be off. So click on off, then off, and then select the layers that you want to isolate. It just means that AutoCAD will go and hide the rest of these layers. You can go right click and switch them all back on, visibility on, or you use this unisolate tool. Okay. With these isolated, we're going to use that same command we did earlier with the trim. So trim, cutting edges. I'm going to trim. This is my cutting edge. And I'm going to trim all of the construction lines. Trim all that information, get rid of that square, and get rid of that square. Good. Okay, that should have trimmed as well. So It's going to trim that information. Trim. Okay, there we go. Good. I'm just establishing a grid system to work. Now, if you don't have if you don't have layers like grids and that, what I recommend you do is you go and pull in. So what I will do is start a new drawing, open my template file. So start with my template file. What I'm going to do is I will copy in, copy the text information, and I'll copy all this information. Copy all this information. So control C, select all this information and paste it into the site plan, control V, and put it somewhere over here where we can use it later on. Just remember, you might have to copy and paste this again because our UCS, if I switch this off, this will all be at an angle, so I might have to address that. So get rid of that let me go to my view ucs i'm going to change this back to world and world set current and i'm going to go control d i'm going to paste this information in. okay great all right now go back here again set this back to site set current continue okay you want this to be on the world coordinate system and I'll explain it later. Okay, so all that I need is I need this information here. I want these grid lines and I want this grid head because I need to establish my grid system. Okay, and then we can adjust this grid system and we'll make this grid system a block. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab, so this is my grid layer. Okay, if I press control one, grid layer. Okay, I might have to change these line weights. So maybe let's, let's do that, let's load in some proper line weights, etc. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this object over here, go to other, and I'm going to load a series of, so I want, I want a series of these, I want these ones, I want all the way down to center. So this information to there, I think that's all I need. And center lines. I'm going to bring in all that information. Press OK. I'm going to say reload the line types. Reload and do this for reload all selected line types. Okay. Now hit the regen key. Now sometimes you need to adjust these scales because they get a bit they get broken. So here I've adjusted that one. Let's just see this one. Change that back to one line with scales. Okay. We'll discuss how this works a bit later on, but for now just make sure that these line scales are visible. Okay, so that's how I fix mine. And I'm going to use the match tool. So I'm going to match this tool. And I'm going to match all of these objects over here. Okay. Yes, I know there's some behind there. And I'll address that a bit in a minute. Because here I can access these lines here as well. So access all of these lines. And change all of those to the grid layer. Okay, so we're establishing our grid. Fantastic. All right, now that I've established my grid, I'm going to grab this grid icon. And I'm going to move this down. So Control C, Control V, 
you can use Control V or you can just use the move command. Okay, so you can grab this and then just say copy. It's a special block. You don't have to do much to this. Okay, so let's move this down. Okay, so how do we want these to work? We want these to work in a certain way. So if you go and look at my example I've provided, a PDF. Okay, so typically how we done with these one, two, three, four. So let's go and have a look at the second. Let's go and look at the second site plan because this information we might move to another site plan. So I'm only showing the grids on my site plan. I'm not showing them on my SDP. They're not required on my SDP. So here I've got A, B, C, D, and E, and one, two, and three. Okay. All right. So let's go and set that up. So all I'm going to do now is grab this. Here you'll see it might have a rotation on. This block might be rotated. But I can fix I can fix this rotation. So I'm going to go and click in the middle, go to rotate, and I can rotate this object. Go to reference. So I want to reference this. So I'm going to click on there. Shift right click, try and find a quadrant because these have quadrants built into them. But I see that's preset. Okay, so maybe this file what I need to do. So let me explain you. Let's explain how we're going to affix that to the right location. So what we're we going to do. We're going to go to view, we're going to go back here, we're going to set this back to world, set current. Okay, I'm going to grab that section head. So I'm going to go control C, select copy and paste, go back to and set this back to my site, set, press OK, and now I can go to control V. Now this is quite cool because now it fixes this head. Now I can move this information. Shift right click, quadrant. So shift right click will give you snaps to objects that you can't typically snap to. So I'm going to grab that object, double click because it's a special type of block. It will have an attribute built into it and you can simply change that to A. A. Okay. So go and add the rest of these values onto your... So here we're going to go and add... So grab one of these and copy... So here I'm just copying them in this direction. And we'll need to scale these, these heads. So that's something else I've got to do. Okay. These heads are preset at a scale 1 to 50, generally. So we just need to add the correct scale to them so that they work correctly. If you click on the calculator, you can add that scale factor. So 200 divided by 50, because that was its general scale, equals, sorry, 200 divided by, sorry, backspace divided, that one, sorry, uh, go back, go back, divided by 50, enter 4. So we're applying a scale of 4. Okay, so that's the correct scale now. So move this. Okay. Now that we've applied that scale, now I'm going to copy this object. Copy this object, endpoint, so endpoint to endpoint. Just remember, switch on your on snaps. So switch on your on snaps. Again, copy this object. Now we're going to use the quadrant, shift right click, quadrant, and we're going to go and grab these values. Okay. That value there, that value there, that value there. Okay. Now these are going to be numbers, so that'll be one. Okay. Double click, that must be one. One, okay, double click, two, okay, and then double click, three. This grid's important. We need to establish this grid to work accurately, and we can use our dimensions to work with this grid. So this grid we're going to use for the time being, but we'll hide it when we don't need it anymore. Okay, now that we've made this grid, select the grid objects, select all the grid objects, and use your isolate command to go to home, Isolate layer, 
I'm going to make all this information a block. Select all this information. And here I'm going to go and say create block. I'm going to call this site grid. Okay. Pick points. I'm specifying a base point. So use where the intersect is my base point and everything. Now these objects will become a block, a grid. And make sure they're on the grid layer. Okay. Fantastic. Now that I've made these objects a grid or a block, so I've made this grid a block. Now I need to, I'll customize this information later on, but if I go and I right click on the block and I say edit in place, edit block in place, now it means that I can use the stretch command, stretch, and now I can adjust the grids without, and click on F8 to lock it on X and Y. So now I can adjust this grid information to work well with my site without selecting stuff in the background. Okay, for now, I'm just going to stretch this, get this in a good location. Stretch, just remember, sometimes if on snaps is on, it will try and snap to stuff. So switch on snaps off sometimes. On snaps, switch this off sometimes, so it doesn't automatically snap to stuff. I'm happy with this initial setup. I will tweak it to work with my site. But for now, I'm happy. Just change these line weights a bit. So that generally we're going to make about four. Four. Okay, just remember if they're not looking correct, click on this option over here and click on other. You need to make sure that this is off and you need to set your global scale factor to 10. Okay, that's a general rule of thumb. Match these objects. What's nice when you're working in a block, it won't select all other objects, it'll only select the objects that you're working with in this object, which is what I like about a block. Okay. Okay, great. So my block's done. Now I can save changes. So save changes to your block at the top because it's telling you you're working in the block. Press OK. Now I've got my block set up neatly. Okay, just remember I might have to go and change the letters. So I'm just go and do that quickly. So double click, this will open up in a, an actual editor. So that will be A, that will be B. You don't necessarily, you can just literally select this and change that here in your properties. That's also another way to do it. See, that also works. You can change this in properties because it'll actually give you the attributes there. Double click to activate D and select that one and make that E. E. Okay, great. So A, B, C, D, and E. One, two, three, and four. Close block. Save changes. So these two ways to edit blocks. Just remember you double click, it'll open up in a block editor. So it'll hide everything in the background, close, or you can click on the block, right click and say edit in place. Okay, so here you can go and say edit, edit block in place, edit block in place. Okay. Okay, great. So now that's set up. Now I just want to go and establish my trees quickly. So if you're using my example file and you've got your images hidden in the same file, let's activate those. Now, I don't need this image anymore because I used to grab the context. So delete the images that you don't need. Okay, sorry, that one I did need, so undo. Uh, bring back layers, so undo is control Z. So switch on your images layer. Okay. So select this layer in the background, delete that layer. This is the layer I need to go and capture my trees. So we need to go and capture our trees quickly. So let's just move. So copy this, you can just literally copy it, F3. So from that base point, switch off your ortho snap, so switch off ortho mode, just remember ortho mode locks it on X and Y coordinate. And now I'm gonna use a draw with command, so grab this image, home, modify, send to back, send to back, and then RE for reject, okay. All that I'm using this for now is to trace those tree objects. Okay, just remember, you can go and copy these tree objects from this other file. So you can grab this, the 
actually. Control C, Control V. Okay, Control V. I can paste these anywhere over here. Okay, paste them anywhere you need to. Now these three objects you can start scaling and using. Okay. That's my demolished tree. Okay, that's my existing tree. That's my proposed tree. I see that this block is broken when I've pasted it in. So if that does happen, just try and find if you go to blocks and you go to insert, it'll have a list here. So you need to find the existing tree. Let's just try that again. Okay, so if this tree does break like this, you can just simply use the scale command to scale this tree to the correct scale. Okay, so we've got a, a tree to be removed, a tree that needs to, that's a proposed tree, and we've got an existing tree. Okay, all right, so what you need to do is we're going to go and capture what trees are going to be demolished. So have a look here. I'm going to demolish all of these trees on the side here. So I know it's hard to see at the moment. You can also go to your sheet and they don't work in that view. So just remember that. So here, you just have to fade out this drawing a bit more maybe. So let's fade this out a bit more so that we can start seeing the trees in the background. Okay, fade this out a bit more. So now we can see our tree objects. Okay, so now we're gonna move these trees, existing trees. So what trees do you wanna retain? So I might retain this tree. Over here, try and find its center best as you can. Just remember, you'll need to scale. But what's neat is if you place a tree and you press the space bar, you'll see that these commands that appear, you're gonna find the scale factor one. So here I'm just gonna scale this tree. So there's my existing tree. Okay, I've got some proposed trees in that I'll put in a bit later part of my design. So I'm just gonna move one of these here. Okay, and I've got a tree that I'm gonna demolish. And I know for a fact that I'm gonna demolish these trees over here. So go and add these trees. The demolished tree works well because it's got this handle built in. Okay, this one should have worked the same from this other command over here. It should have, these trees should all work the same. I think there was just an error in that file. I think there's an overwrite. So these things should work if you've used the correct. Okay, so let's maybe show you how to fix that. Let's grab this tree over here. Okay, so this tree's name is existing tree. So what I need to do is go and delete the block with the same name because I think there's a clash with the same name. So you're going to go to Manage, Purge, and you're going to select None. So I'm going to go and find that tree. So untick everything, go to Blocks, and you need to go and find that existing tree. So let's get rid of existing tree. And I'm going to say Yes, and I'm going to Purge Checked Items purge this item so that tree is no longer available okay so it just means if I go to insert or home and I go to the blocks and I go to insert you'll notice that an existing tree won't be on this block section anymore recent blocks favorite blocks blocks from library you can go and create library so you can see that tree is no longer here now if I go to this file and I grab this existing tree now control C go back into here control V now you see the tree's working fine. So if I grab it now, the wrong tree, so that was the demolished tree. So let's grab this one up here. Was this one up here? Let's see. Trees uh, demo. Ah, so that was a mistake. Existing tree. So these were these trees, there was a mistake. Okay, let's grab. Okay, but why did that happen? Okay, let's find this. Grab this tree over here. Control C, Control V. Okay, let's make sure that that's existing tree. Yeah, and let's see this other tree. Let's see if that's demolished. That could, that's also so that's a demolished tree. Okay, so there was an error with one of these trees. Okay, to fix this problem, select the existing tree. You're gonna go to Block Editor. So right click and go to Block Editor. Select the line work and just make this sure that this is all continuous home. My layer. Okay, so on trees demo. So that should be on trees, just on trees. So that was the mistake. So it's just an error with the finished save changes. Okay, now, now to work. It's just it's just gone beneath that image. So if I hit regen, it should reappear. 
Okay, and they have all select that object and go to draw order, modify, draw order, center back. This happens. And then regen. Here it is over here. Okay, so we fixed this error. So now that's working well. Okay, so what you need to go and do is go and grab, you need to go and move and pick the trees that are going to be retained, which trees are going to be demolished. So this tree is going to be demolished. Okay, so this tree is going to be demolished. So let's just bring that family in again because that was slightly broken. So let's just say insert trees. Existing trees, demolished tree. Okay. So here's my demolished tree. Now oh, it's working better. Okay. Now that's working well. All right. What we might need to do is just change the hatches. So let's just fix that as well. So let's go and say edit. Demolished tree. Let's just make all of the scale, line weight scale. Select all those properties. Go to home. Properties. Now I'm going to change the scale to two or four. Four is fine. Great. Okay, close and you're going to say save changes to block. Okay, regen. It's just gone to the bottom. Here it is over here. Now you're going to go and move your trees that need to be demolished. Okay, so go ahead and go and capture these trees. I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, so what I've gone and done is I've gone and established all my trees, I've got my road network. More or less, there's some information that we'll need to re remove for our site establishment plan, like this entrance, for example. But we can always just copy this information back as it is for that plan. Okay, now in essence, what's going to happen is, if I go back to view, and I change this back to world. Okay, so in essence, I'm going to copy this information because... This information is going to be pretty much, yes, this road network will change again, and I can just bring that back in and trim it again. But in essence, I can just fix this line work and get rid of this information for my site establishment. Okay, so I'm going to grab all this information. I'm going to copy this. F8, lock it on F8. I'm going to put one, one version here and another version over here. Okay, so in essence, this is going to become my site establishment plan. And this will become my site plan. So this will be my site development plan, site establishment plan. Okay. For example, on my STP, I can switch off. I can delete these trees that are demolished. So remember, I don't need that for my demolished. So you can get rid of those, for example. Okay. I'm going to leave everything else. My contours, my grids, I probably won't need. I'm going to leave them on for the time being, but delete them once I don't need them anymore. Because I'm going to need my grid for this. Okay. So... If we just go back through the examples. Okay, so first set of drawings. This is my site location plan with my SDP. And here's my site establishment plan with my site plan. Okay, so it's this is what we're in the process of creating. Okay. All right, but in essence, our drawing file is set up correctly now. I've got all the correct information. And I've established what my entrance is going to be. Now I need to go and add some additional information to start making this look like my design. So like how the roof is going to work, all of that kind of information. Okay, so I've got a, a series of chimneys that I need to draw in here. Okay, so I just use an image that I just pulled in beneath and trace that information. But I'll show you how I start establishing my walls, how I start drawing in my roof. But remember, this is all construction lines and that's how it's going to work roughly. 